Thanks, Andrew. So in this section, we'll be looking at the uploading basics. So we'll be covering uh, what the upload API does, how to upload assets. We'll be covering a little bit about the upload response and some of the key factors that that contains. And we'll also be talking about the public ID and the resource type, what those are, and how they affect delivery. So in this first example, we'll be uploading a local file. If you've downloaded the Jumpstart repo, um, you'll see there's an assets directory which has a few example files that you can play with. In this instance, though, we'll be taking the hiker.jpg and we'll be uploading that to our cloud. So if we jump over to Visual Studio Code, you'll see that we have require.env.config. So what this is doing is pulling in your configuration values from a .env file. Basically, it means that you don't have to put your API key, your API secret in every single script. You can just handily copy and paste this, and we'll sort of sort it out in the background. We're also calling the Cloudinary library by setting it as a constant and requiring Cloudinary v2. If you did want to have a deep dive into the docs, you can do so with a handy link here. But the basic upload method is simply using the Cloudinary library, using uploader to invoke the upload API, and we're then calling the upload method. We're using the local file here, so assets hiker.jpg, which you'll see here on the left in assets hiker.jpg. So we're going to take this file and we're going to upload it to our cloud. So the upload method uses promises. We also use callbacks as well if you wanted to do that. We're going to use promises in all these examples. Um, yeah, if we just run this code to give you a demonstration, if I run uh, node local upload, that'll upload to my cloud, and we'll see the upload response returned. And we'll go into this in a bit more detail later on. We'll see some key information here, such as the public ID. What we really want to see is that the asset has successfully uploaded to our cloud. So we have the secure URL here. So if we click into that, so if we open up that link on our browser, we can see that the asset has gone from our local machine into our Cloudinary account. You can see here it's in my DannyV training cloud. Similarly, we can upload remote files as well if we wanted to. So there's an image here of a man on a surfboard from Wikimedia Commons. So if we wanted to use that uh, as our file to upload, we can go into remote-upload.js. And you can see we're still using the Cloudinary upload method. But this time, rather than including a local path, we're including a remote path. So if we had to run this very, very quickly with node remote-upload.js, um, that'll upload to your cloud. And we can see we have the secure URL. We can open that up in our browser. And we can see this is not the Wikimedia Commons version. We can see this has been successfully uploaded to our account. So there are a number of useful properties returned in the JSON response. Um, you can see highlighted here, we've got the secure URL, which we just opened up in our browser, but also the public ID and the resource type, which uh, Stephen will talk about. Thank you, Danny. As Danny mentioned, uh, part of the response you receive when you upload a file includes the public ID. And that's one of the main identifiers for an asset in your account. Uh, by default, the public ID is a series of random characters, such as an example here. But depending on your business requirements, you can choose how it's named. For example, you can choose a specific value. You can choose for the public ID to be set automatically based on the file name that you upload, or you can do both, where the file is uploaded based on the file name you provided. But we also add a series of random characters to the end to ensure that it's unique within your account. So let's look at some examples of doing that in code. So if you look here in the repository at the public ID.js file, you can see here there are some example uploading API calls, and each one of those uses a different method of naming the file. So by default, we will upload this from the assets folder, hiker, and we're not specifying any other parameters here. We're just going to look at the results. So we run the code, it uploads the file, and you can see here in the response, the public ID value is a series of random characters. You can also choose to use the file name plus a random suffix. You can do that by passing the parameters use file name true and unique true. So that will use the file name hiker, but will also add a random suffix to the end. Go to our terminal, run the code again. And you can see now in the URL, hiker is part of the public ID, but then there's also some random characters as well. So you can choose one of these methods depending on what it is you want to do with your assets. Another part of the identifier for your asset is the resource type. And fundamentally what that means is how the assets can be uh, processed by Cloudinary. By default, you will assume an uploaded file as an image. You can also upload videos, and there are different uh, operations you can perform on a video, different transformations, different add-ons. We also support what we call raw files. Now, this doesn't mean uh, a raw file from a camera, which is a, an image format. It's just our way of identifying any file which is not an image or a video. Common uses of this, uh, as shown in this example here, are font files. You may also want to deliver things like CSS, JavaScript files, uh, documents. You could also upload, a, for example, a PDF as a raw file, 
which will still let it be delivered, but you won't be able to use it with any of our transformation features. And there are some use cases where you may want to do that. Now, as you can see in the first example here, we haven't specified a resource type. And in the last one, we've specified it as auto. The reason you would specify the resource type as auto is so that Cloudinary will open the file that you upload and automatically detect the resource type. So if you don't know what it is ahead of time, for example, if you're uploading user-generated content and you don't know what type the resource is, you can specify it as auto. So we've now talked about some parts of the URL or the metadata for each asset. And then we're going to talk about how the URLs are built and what other parts of it you can change and have control over. And for that, I'm going to pass you over to Alex.